even if there's nothing in your community, you know, I always suggest just buy your kids one of the trash picker uppers and walk around your neighborhood park and pick up trash. That's another way to show that, you know, we're responsible. We're collectively trying to make this better, a better place. And you can be part of that. Kids just really want to be, they want to be doing things that make the world a better place. For our Be The Change segment this month, we are once again featuring Charity Navigator, a nonprofit that helps millions of people take action and support the causes they care about by connecting them to the best charities that align with their passions and values. I've invited the Chief Program Officer at Charity Navigator, Laura Andes, to the show today. We're going to discuss how to encourage philanthropy in our children and teens and how Charity Navigator can help. Welcome to the show, Laura. Hi, it's great to be here. Hi, Andy. Thank, thank you so much for coming and having this conversation with me. We were having a little pre-chat. I have some preteens, so this conversation is very important to me as they start to get older and realize that there's a world outside of them and how we can maybe have an impact on it. So talk to us about why it's important to involve our children and teens in philanthropic efforts and what that can do for them as well as for parents. I think it's so important to teach the value of generosity to our kids. And I'm sure that's something everybody wants to, as parents, really instill that value. And this is a great way to do that. Um, I think we want to make sure our kids know that they can actually affect change in the world. And, you know, they can be part of the solution to some of the issues that we see in our society. And philanthropic giving and volunteering are just such a great way to do that. I love that. Can you talk about just some of the positive benefits of being involved in that generosity? And I've, I've we've had some conversations with some psychologists on the show and, uh, you know, Harvard researchers that have talked about the effectiveness of happiness. I know you've probably studied that quite a bit as, as part of your role. Just talk about how giving and service can really help our kids. Well, I'm no psychologist, but <laughs> I think we all know that it really develops better, stronger uh, social skills and more empathy. I think people, when they start to think about the challenges that other people are having in their lives, particularly volunteering sometimes exposes that to kids, it just develops that sense of empathy that like, oh, you know, and gratitude too, that my life might be, I'm better off than other people and I want to be able to feel how they're feeling about their situation. Um, and it increases much more happiness and life satisfaction. I think with kids, even small acts of sharing and kindness, you can see how they light up. And, you know, as kids become teenagers, it's even more important to, you know, fill their cup through generosity and um, how that can really, you know, boost their happiness. So I just think, you know, kids can be such a model for how us adults want to be if we watch them and we give the opportunities for them to do that. And we can learn through trying to teach them these values of generosity. I absolutely love that. Now, you you are a mom yourself, and uh, we, mm -hmm. we have this conversation. It's obviously very uh, close to your heart, too. How early can we start this type of generosity or these maybe acts of volunteering, things like that? How early is too early? <laughs> I think you can start very early, as early as three or four. It's really important to start modeling the generosity that you want to show in your kids and talking to them about it. I can remember when my son was probably three or four driving out of a parking lot and seeing, you know, an unhoused person who is paying, who is asking for money and having a really great conversation that was age appropriate about how we're really lucky and not everyone has what we have. And so it's our, um, it's sort of our responsibility to help others who are less fortunate to, uh, than us. And, and he really wanted to give that person a dollar. And so, you know, I let him do that. And then we talked about other ways you can foster generosity. Maybe we should give to a homeless shelter or to a food bank or something like that. And, you know, he was three or four and he really understood what I was trying to say. And I think so you can start really early. I think you can start, you can talk to kids about how you give um, and why you give to the causes. Uh, you know, I want to make it so everyone has enough food to, to eat. And that's why we're dropping off hands at the food bank or giving a check or something like that. You know, kids want to be part of adult discussions. And when you give them the opportunity, it's always so amazing how they rise to the challenge and really um, get what you're trying to tell them. Yeah, I, I love that. You know, let's say I'm, I'm really into, you know, making sure that children around the country 
aren't going hungry. And that's something that's very, it calls to my heart and I want to help there. My daughter or my son, maybe they don't, maybe they're not as, you know, drawn to that topic. How do we encourage giving and philanthropy? Maybe if they don't glom onto the things that we're passionate about. Well, I love just how you phrase that. And I think the key to philanthropic giving, and, and we say this at Charity Navigator, you have to go give with both your head and your heart. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have your heart involved, it's going to be much harder to be the generous person that maybe you're aspiring to be. So kids might have different passions than we do. And I think you should let them lean into that and let them find what they're really passionate about. You know, um, we let our kids choose charities and my daughter really loves, she's she's really uh, passionate about homelessness in our community. And so we always give to a homeless shelter. My son's more interested in the environment. And so, you know, we give to environmental causes. And I think that that makes it feel much more personal to them. And we're hoping, we're trying to instill that our kids will be better people, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, putting in these values and giving them some autonomy, I'm hoping, and I think the research uh, backs up that that will sort of create a habit of that when they're older and it's, you know, their own resources that they earned. I love that. Uh, you know, we can, we can give our money, which is very important. And we're doing that with our children, but we can also give our time as well. Talked about the importance of, of volunteering. And then I know that maybe that becomes a little more restrictive age wise. So maybe some mm -hmm. ideas or, or when, when we could start with that. Yeah, you know, um, there are opportunities for sort of families to volunteer together often. I think food banks often have food delivery where, you know, the family delivers food. I think those can start quite early. It probably depends on your area. As you get into teens, there's a lot more opportunities. You know, volunteering for a charity that's local, they always need sort of admin support. And so it could be a great way for a teen to do some some work in an office setting that helps the charity as well as, you know, maybe get some skills of their own. So a two for one benefit. And, you know, even if there aren't opportunities, you can always sort of fundraise as a family. I know it sounds corny, but the lemonade stand where they raise money and they give that money away, that really teaches amazing, valuable lessons or even collecting supplies. I know that um, the emergency shelter near my house says, you know, we'd love for families to do little packets of hygiene, like toothbrush, toothpaste. And that's something, you know, you can do to get at home together. And it really fosters a great um, conversation about what we're trying to do and what values. Again, it's about values um, we're trying to instill in our kids. So I think there's a lot of opportunities. Some might be easier as others. It definitely gets easier as your kids get older. Um, but there's always some way you can help. Even if there's nothing in your community, you know, I always suggest just Buy your kids one of the trash picker uppers and walk around your neighborhood park and pick up trash. Yeah, um, that's another way to show that you know we're responsible. We're collectively trying to make this better, a better place, and you can be part of that. Kids I just that. really want to be, they want to be doing things that make the world a better place. Absolutely, and those are sometimes feel uh, you know what is this small act that I'm going to do? There's so many ripple effects from that action. Not only are you physically doing something great, but then other people see you doing other things great and they want to do great things too. And that reverberates. Uh, that that brings me to my, my third level of, of giving that I like to talk about where we talked about our money, our time. We can also use our voice as well. Are there ways that you've uh, talked about this with through different platforms or even with your children about using our voice, whether that's through, you know, contacting our, our local representatives or, uh, you know, social media, things like that, where we can voice how we want to see some change in the world so we can be the change in the world. Yeah, I, I love that. And I think this is where kids are really, really great at it and sort of sharing their personal experiences. And so it's always amazing to see what teens can do and how they can mobilize in their schools. And I think there's a lot of opportunities for teens in particular in school clubs to sort of talk and advocate and be you know, writing a letter to your congressman or even making that phone call about something you care about or even your local representative. Um, it's, it's a really can be a really impactful way to show that there are different level levers of change. And even just talking about it, I don't think we talk about charitable giving as much as we do. And so, you know, having them sort of be a voice to say like, our family does this, you know, this is why it's great for me. 
I think that can really be a great way for kids to, again, sort of understand the importance of this and to uh, share their values. I love that. I love that. Thank you for this conversation. And I know Charity Navigator is keeping this conversation going quite a bit. Talk to us about how Charity Navigator can help with this process of making your teens a little bit more philanthropic in their in their lives. I think it's a great resource to teach sort of another value is that you have to be discerning in your giving. Not all nonprofits are the same. Most are doing great work, but not all of them. And so this gives you a way for say, hey, before we write that check, let's just look on the site and make sure that they're trustworthy and have you know, all the systems and structures in place to be impactful. And my kids really love doing that and kind of digging into that. And then also it's a great place to discover new charities. So if you're not sure where to give, we have tons of recommended charities lists and maybe you want to give in a, in a cause area that's less familiar to you. You can go to our site and we'll give you 10 or 20 recommendations that at least kind of shrinks the universe and maybe exposes you to new charities that you weren't familiar with. So I think kids really like to do that and to see that, you know, find new charities in a way that's not just sort of a Google search, but a little bit more curated. Absolutely. Yeah. And one of my favorite things about it, everybody, I, I use Charity Navigator quite a bit, is uh, the ability to kind of look a little deeper into the charity and seeing how much of your donation is actually going to impact the cause that we're, we're, we're worried about and how much of that is going to go to, you know, advertising or salaries or things like that as well. You know, obviously people need to get paid. I'm all, I'm all about people getting paid, but we, it's good to know to have a little bit more clarity on uh, where, where your dollars are going and, and how it's being impacted. Charity Navigator does a great job. Of, of ranking those charities as well as giving you the uh, the deeper dive and one area, another area, I keep, I'm going to keep bragging on you, Laura, sorry, um, <laughs> is, is if you are wondering, you're like, I've hear, heard about this topic or I heard the, the tragedies that are happening in Ukraine, like how can I help? Or, you know, maybe a natural disaster, Charity Navigator will kind of dive deeper into those areas too to help help you see which organizations that are top ranked are actually making the most difference and uh, really allowing you to, you know, utilize your money and your time in the best fashion. Now, Laura, I have a personal question for you. You've been with Charity Navigator for a little while now. What made you want to be a part of this organization and uh, involve yourself and your time? Yeah, I, I love Charity Navigator. And I think I want to be there for two reasons. One is to help people find the charity that really um, makes a difference in their life and get that warm, fuzzy feeling from giving and, you know, giving with confidence, as we say, to say that this is a good charity. And then I love working with nonprofits and helping them be the best that they can be. So it's been a really wonderful journey here. I love it. That's so great. Now, if somebody's listening and they want to give their money, their time, or their voice towards your organization, which is a nonprofit as well, where can yes. people go to learn more about Charity Navigator? Yeah, just go to charitynavigator.org and you can both find a charity or we'd love it if you donated to us so that we can continue to pro provide this free service. Excellent. Laura, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you.